this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Justin DeWitt from Hi, Fireside buddy. Games, co-designer of Kaiju Crush. <laughs> that I have giant monster sounds and giant monster have that when you open the box. <laughs> A little button we can push? Yes. Yes, we should. Okay. You're right. <laughs> but you do not. But uh, we have the board game set up here. We do. Obviously, we are the kaiju. Yes, indeed. We are going to crush. Yes, you're good. That's it. We're done. That's we all you need, need to know. A few more details. <laughs> there is a that. little more to that, but yeah, yeah. In this case, you are the monster. You want to smash this city for fun and profit. That is what monsters do. Uh, and the only thing stopping you is the other monsters. So okay. uh, in the game, the way it's going to work is your turns are really straightforward. You're going to move. You're going to smash whatever tile you land on. You're going to get it for points. And then if you're next to or or in the same spot as another monster, you'll fight, getting you probably more points. And along the way, you need to be thinking about some of the bonus objectives for scoring but that's essentially what the game is move collect those points fight and then the strategy gets in there so okay movement is kind of interesting in that every player is going to have first off they're going to pick a monster and have a random starting location okay. your starting location is one of your territory markers that has your footprint and your color on it and that's where you go um you have a whole bunch more here you use to stomp the buildings and okay. then you get dealt one movement card all of which are slightly different and they show you your monster starting position and where you can end up so it's a simple map of where you can go okay. you do have to move the whole distance you can't move halfway or anything you got to finish it out can't go off the edge of the board that's cheating uh, and then you also have op the option of using your own card or this shared card over here so that's a community card that's just out there for anybody to use on their turn and the way it works is if you use that one it will stay if I use mine it will switch and now the trample would be out I would have leave so okay. if you use it, you lose it, and that way these cards are going to get cycled around. Okay. There's always one more movement card than there are players in the game, so in the reality, you and I would just be playing a two-player game, but let's have right. these out anyway. Right. So, on your turn, you move, you smash, you possibly fight. So I'm looking at my options. I can leap all different places, like a knight in chess, or I can trample somewhere. Well, I, of course, want to do both, and I want the points. The points are good. Um, so reality, I would probably play trample to go get this new nuclear power plant, because it's five points. I lay down my smashy smash crater there. Okay. I keep my five point. You got it. I have to give that up. So now you can trample. And you being our yellow guy over here. Choices, right. choices, choices. Well, what if I dash up here to Right. Fight. Now we're doing it. Okay, boom. So that is where combat comes in. Okay. So the way it works is anytime you're adjacent or same space, you can fight. Um, either way, you're always going to end up getting some victory, or I should say the winner's going to get victory points. The difference is if you're on the same space and you fight, the winner also takes that area over. So you might be right. able to, if you were fighting him, take his spot. Fighting works like this. You have territory markers. On the back, they have these wacky symbols on them. Okay. Drop the top five from your deck and right. make a hand of cards out of it. And now you're going to look at these and you're going to decide what to play. And what we're doing is a sort of rock, paper, uh, scissors with trump cards. Dear visitors, did you know the Code Games family is a brand new member? This time, it's a cooperative version for two players. What? Visit it's Check it. Games Edition, Demo really? Room number 232 on the second floor to buy and play the brand new Code Games Duet. Wow, okay. second floor. All right, so um, these symbols are actually printed on your little monster guide, which I don't know if you can see, that's probably yeah. too hard to zoom in, but we've got the rock, paper, scissors engine going in our version of the world, where we have a claw that grabs a tail, so claw beats tail, tail swipes the legs, and the legs kick the hands. That's pretty easy, that's rock, paper, scissors. Then we've got fire breath, which is this big awesome one right here. That beats all three of the basic rock, paper, scissors, the claw, tail, kick, it beats all of them. All three of those basic ones will beat Spikes. Spikes seems like a useless card, but it's the only one that can beat Fire Breath. So these trump cards on top of regular rock, paper, scissors. So, the way this works is, I'll play for the blue player. We each look at these, decide what we want to play, and when we're ready, we're going to put them face down, and on three, we flip it over. Oh, leg sweeps oh, tail, so I win. So yours goes face down, mine stays face up. That way, I just kind of like on a separate pile. Yeah. At the end, we can count just who's got the most face up ones. All right, All right for my next trick, Oh, I kick you because you had spines. Oh, I'm so good at this game. It's almost uh, like I helped make it. Okay, uh, fire breath beats yeah. hand, so I took him three for three. Woo! Um, best of three, or best, excuse me, best of five is how you win. If you had won two and I had won two and like we had a draw, because if we both play the same symbol, it's right. generally um, a, a, a loss for both players. Your special ability breaks that rule, however. But anyway, if it had been a tie, the defender always wins. So if we had actually tied for a number of, of wins, you would have uh, uh, tied. And the okay. deal is... So I got beat up. Yep. Causing trouble. I don't know where my... Uh, 
victory points win. I lost, right. I've you lost no victory, victory points. points. But yeah, the idea is there's these random victory points face down. I would take one and keep it. Um, we move along. What we're trying to do also, though, is keep an eye on these objectives. So this is one way to make points. Obviously, smash buildings, fight people. That's great. Okay. This comes down to, um, at the end of the game, there's three different things we're going to look at for scoring. Concentrated has to do with where your territory markers are in relation to the board. It can either be concentrated, meaning you count your biggest group, anything that's not uh, broken by a diagonal. That okay. would be a group. It can be the opposite of that, which is spread, meaning here's a group, there's a group. I would want them all over the board. Yep. You get bonus points for those. Everyone counts these two. These aren't exclusive. Every player is going to count either their biggest area or their group. Hoarder is based on these cards. Um, Symbols. On yes, that. who has the most or the least of each of the four different groups. Mm -hmm. uh, square literally means did you build a square? And you can have multiple squares. <laughs> and if they overlap, you count multiples. The opposite of a square, of course, is a line, just like they teach in Monster School. That the last one for D. My monsters are not very bright. Oh, think. man. <laughs> they got to go back. So the D is a little bit different. D comes out in the middle of the game. What happens is the player who has the most of whatever suit that is, is going to get that like an additional special ability. So I think you okay. smashed the transportation, I so did. you would get Movement Mimic. This is an awesome one because what it means is on your turn, you can use your card, the community card, or the player to your left, which happens to be me. You'll have access to all my movement cards, okay. all the movement cards of the game. Unless I get more movement cards, then I take this ability and it becomes mine. Okay. So you sort of pass it around as people take the movement cards. All right. Game ends when no one can move because you can never land on a smashed tile. Once it's been cratered, That's it's out of play. Us. Exactly. There's no fun there. Even yes. your own. So you move until you can't, you pass, and then you add up all your scores for all the tiles you smashed, all your victory points, all your objectives, and you see how awesome you are. Along the okay. way, you're probably having to burn your special ability, a one-time only card that lets you break a lot of the other rules. But that's Kaiju. It's actually coming out November 1st. We have less than 200 copies because it's been selling like crazy here at the show. So if you actually want to pick this up months before, come by our booth, 1349. Right. Get off the computer. Yes, come here and right fly now. Fly here. It's not that expensive. totally economical. Yes. For you people at home, tell your friends that we're here. Um, yeah, so this one's out, uh, like I said, here technically now, but really November 1st. All right. Thanks for the review.